Welcome to High School Football, home of small town pride, big time grudges, it's a showcase of the immortals, and stories that will last a lifetime. I can remember being that eight, nine, ten year old kid hanging on the fence. It doesn't matter if you're an old timer talking about the glory days or fans sitting in the stands. Everyone knows what these games mean to the players on the field and the towns they represent. These are the rivalries that we love to hate. Growing up in Watertown, there's nothing like it. It's a big family, it feels like. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody's over hanging out at each other's houses. Everybody does have your back. Everybody supports like all the local teams and sports and like all the local like businesses that are around here. So it's kind of just like one big family. My first exposure to the Watertown going for a rivalry, man, I tell you, I was uh, 18 years ago, I got pulled out to be the school resource officer there. And it's it's really surreal, man. The uh, the first game I actually worked was the Watertown Goinsville game. And I think we ended up losing that game, but man, it, it was it was it was close, maybe a two point game, somewhere in there. But it, it was uh, you clearly see, man. I mean, just fan, fans was it was just crazy. If you've been to Goinsville before, man, it's just wild because you know the fence is right there by the field, and all your fa all the fans are there screaming and yelling. Then on the other side, it's very tight, too. So you had all the Watertown fans, man. And you could just tell, you could see the magnitude of the rivalry then. And I had seen no rivalry like that since coming from Lebanon when you saw the uh, Mount Julian and Lebanon rivalry, man. So I was like, dude, this is insane. All the fans kind of knew the other side of the stadium. Like, our fans knew their fans. And we played against these kids for eight to ten years. And we just kind of started to grow to know each other after that. And that's what made the rivalry a little bit more fun. All the adults, they grew up playing them, so they tried to like hype us up a little bit to kind of just start a rivalry, I guess. And it worked. I was wearing pants down to my ankle, so I didn't know what I was doing, but it was just fun. Um, like we said earlier, going to the uh, community league basketball gym and having pep rallies and stuff before the first games. And Gordonsville was always one of the first games, I think. And we always just had a blast just going out and competing whether we knew what we were doing or not. <laughs> when I was playing high school ball, uh, my papa, my dad's dad, came to the games and he couldn't see, but he folded out an old metal chair at the, in a, at the end zone because he knew I was playing. And he watched those games, Coach Brownie Robinson, Coach Robinson's dad. And uh, so uh, he would come to the, all those games. But the big thing was that I always heard Coach Brownie would come to the practices and tell all of us Coach Robinson would do the same, and even my dad, being from Gordonsville, always said you better tighten up your chin straps going to Gordonsville up there on the hill because them boys are pretty rough, pretty tough. Or if Gordonsville was coming to town, he always said tighten up your belts, tighten up your chin straps because Gordonsville's coming to town. And I used to couldn't stand hearing that. So that started the rivalry for me. We had, uh, you know, what we used to call a lot of slobber knockers with, with Gordonsville, and it, it came from there, and that's what we tried to, when we started coaching youth football with all you guys, that's what we tried to, we wanted you guys to feel a little bit of what we felt when we were playing. I think a lot of the reason we have that rivalry is because of his or dad's time playing them, and then another thing that adds on to it is Coach Webster is from Gordonsville, and that speaks for itself. There's a rivalry there. And he always taught us, or just told us about how it used to be and how it needs to be. So we carried that on a little bit, I think. You know, me and Gabe are good friends, Coach Webster. And uh, I've asked him that a couple of times, like, man, do you even, you know, because he won a state championship here as a player. So I'm just kind of like, man, do you, do you feel, do you feel some type of way? And you know, you know, Gabe, man, he's just, he's a, he's a even, even easy, chill, no, just laid back guy. And he's just kind of like, ah, Job, you know. Um, I just really don't think about it much, man. But I believe in the back of his mind, you know, he thinks about it. But he'll downplay it like he don't think about it a lot. But trust me, I know at the end of the day, Gonsville wants to beat him, and he definitely wants to beat Gonsville. So.
compared to an 85. So uh, I was there on the football team, 81 through 84. So, um, what do we think about Watertown? Well, uh, it, I'll be honest with you, it wasn't good. <laughs> you know, we uh, we just you know we felt like we owned Watertown. Played for uh, my first two years, turned forward, coach forward, and then uh, coach Manley, my junior and senior year. And those guys were always tight with uh, Coach Granny Robinson and then uh, Bill Robinson, his son. So there was a lot of familiarity right there. When I took over in 2005, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of always, you know, we we wanted to build something special here at Watertown. And my approach to that was how I was coached in high school. And that was kind of my approach of it. I was kind of trying to use what I was taught and how I was coached, uh, brought it to my side of when I took over as head coach. And, you know, that's how we wanted to be. We wanted to be a tough football team. We wanted to be a football team that uh, people reckon with. Uh, we wanted to be a football team that when we went to Gordonsville, or they come to Watertown, and they, they were going to have their hands full, you know. As uh, you know, they were going to have to buckle their chin straps up. When they're not playing us, hey, want them to win. But when we're playing, going against each other, I want to beat them. You know, it's, it's almost like playing against your family. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to you want to beat them, but when you're playing them, but at the end of the day, when you're not playing them, you want them to be successful, and that's what we like. You know, we. Um, and now I really think that's how it, I, I don't know for sure that's how the rivalry started, but really think about it, you know, with, with uh, how those former coaches were all so tight and knew one another. And, you know, I know Coach Medley was always at, at uh, Coach Randy Robinson's house growing up a lot. So there was a lot of times right there. And I just really think that's how, you know, that's how it all started. What's unique about Gordonsville, it's uh, the town itself is not that big, but the communities around it, Lancaster, where I'm from, and then you have uh, Sox, you have Hickman, you have Brush Creek, uh, you have the Club Springs area, Stonewall area, uh, New Milton, all those smaller, they were communities at that time when I was in high school. Uh, they all fed uh, what we know as Gordonsville High School. It's just a great small town, uh, you know, everyone kind of knows everybody, uh, you know, we're, we're growing a little bit than we used to be, but, you know, it's just in everything, the school is a big part of the community, the people in the community take a lot of pride in the school and our athletic programs and uh, everyone just really pulls together and uh, it's just a great community to raise kids in. I've always said Gordonsville High School uh, is similar to what a lot of private schools provide people but it's one exception, it's, uh, it's free. Uh, you're known, uh, you know, there's, uh, now I think there's high 80s, low 90s maybe per class. Back then, uh, it was less than that. You know, the rivalry with Watertown is, for me, has been kind of a, it's a lot of self-admiration between the two groups because you've got a lot of similarities. Uh, you know, I think it started really when Coach Ford and Coach Robinson, Brownie Robinson, you know, Brownie Robinson coached here, uh, and him and Coach Ford were good friends. And then, uh, you know, it kind of carried on Bill Robinson. You know, when I started coaching, he was coaching there at uh, Watertown. And then uh, Gavin Webster played here at Gornsville. Uh, you know, uh, Coach Josh Hackett, who they've got there now, he's from across the river at Carthage. So you've got some ties. I didn't like playing against, uh, I didn't like coaching against Bill Robinson, I thought. I just thought that much of it. But at the same time, uh, you know, there's a part of you that, uh, you know, you always want to beat your brother. To us, to me, it's kind of like the old family rivalry. You know, you and your cousins are playing together on Thanksgiving like that. I know there was a period of time, excuse me, a period of time that uh, the Watertown folks would ride the train and get off here in Gordonsville and we would go down and accommodate them and feed them and uh, 
get them into the game, and then they did the same for us. Uh, I know that happened home and home. I'm not sure if it happened any more than two years, but uh, that was a that was a unique uh, experience. You know, I've, I've I've studied a lot of the history of going for football, and I always heard Coach Ford and Coach Robinson were real good friends. You know, they played golf and did stuff together. When I was an assistant, those those games uh, they went down to the wire, and they were eight to six games, or uh, just close and you know, anybody's ball game. But in my first year as head coach here, 83, of course, uh, Mr. Brownie's not coaching, Bill is. And the week that Gordonsville and Watertown played was tough on Mr. Brian Robs because he lived and died with his son. He lived and died with the Purple Tigers but he's in a position where he really couldn't do anything about it. And anyway, we had lost our first ball game that year to that bunch across the river and uh, me trying to follow Coach Turney Ford, who was a legend here, uh, it was a dark day at Black Rock. So we're playing Watertown here the next week and we wound up winning I'm not sure if it was 40 to six or 42 to six, but the uh, last two touchdowns we scored, we had substituted. Uh, we had a sophomore running back who had good speed and uh, Terry Manning got loose on a long run and, and we intercepted a pass late in that ball game and ran it in for those last two scores. We had not tried to run the score up, but but the next morning, Saturday morning, I'm at my mom's in Lancaster. And she needed some, my help in her garden, which is behind the house, and I heard a horn blow. Well, I look, and, and it's Mr. Brownie. So I'm going to the truck, and he's sitting there, and he says, uh, he called me Old Reek. Of course, he nicknamed everybody. And he looked at me and he said, Old Reek, uh, said, you mistreated my son last night. And I said, now wait a minute, Mr. Brownie. I said, those last two touchdowns, we weren't trying to score. And he looked at me and he said, you know, he held up those two fingers. He said, we've always been just like that. But he said, right now, we're like that. And he drove off. So I'm just standing there, but uh, of course he got over it, and, uh, and he passed away. Uh, he was on a ventilator at Carthage Hospital. I was there with uh, with Bill and Miss Becky when the decision was made to remove that, and then uh, I drove with Bill. We went to uh, to Lebanon. Bill picked out the pajamas that his dad uh, was buried in, and I was there with him to be a part of that, and uh, that's how much uh, they mean to me. I always, uh, for, for the last several years, uh, I, I can identify what a head coach goes through. Uh, no one wants to win more than more than head coach, I promise you. And uh, a, lot, a lot of pressure goes with that. A lot of it may be self-imposed, but uh, some from the outside as well. And I've been so uh, proud of the job that, uh, that Gabe Webster's done at Watertown High School. And so uh, he's not the only one. There's a few other guys that uh, on Friday morning, I'll take some good luck. Uh, now he knows the week of the Gordonsville game, he gets I'm thinking about you, but not a good luck. You know, for so many years, it was a big district game and a region game for us. You know, it was so big to get into when I played, only two teams got to go to the playoffs. So, you know, you lost one of those district games and you were in a bind. So it was always a big game for that matter. Uh, you know, I think after Watertown's moved up to 2A, now 3A, uh, I'm glad we've been able to keep playing each other. You know, we have such a great admiration for Coach Webster. You know, I grew up. He was a little bit older than me, but we knew each other well. And, uh, you know, we've always 
done everything we could to keep this game going. There was times we didn't know if we'd be able to, but uh, once they got out of the region, but we've been able to keep everything going. You know, we play in almost every sport still. So I think our basketball teams played last night. So, you know, it's still a good, you know, we're 15, 20 minutes down the road from each other. So it's a close, good game for both schools, good gates, and uh, just a good, clean rivalry that you want to keep playing as long as you can. So here we are. Both towns are empty, and the people of Watertown are getting ready to take the trip down I-40 with their Purple Tiger pride in tow. Meanwhile, Gordonsville is preparing to defend its turf with its own kind of Tiger pride. Both sets of fans are ready to chant and cheer, holding their breath with every play, knowing that victory, it's not just a score, but it's a testament to their unwavering will to win the game. This rivalry, it has a fierce history, but it's more than just a game. It goes beyond the touchdowns and the tackles. Coaches that were once friends now stand on opposite sidelines, fueling the drive that powers their players. As the clock ticks down to kickoff, both teams are ready to step onto that field, ready to give their all for their city, their school, and their home. This is what it's all about. Counting down the days, to least fans can say, it's football time in Tigertown. Any predictions for this year, for this game? Nah, I'll be honest with you, no, because you throw the records out the door, man. It's a fourth quarter game, and man, it's a, it's a dog fight. You you fighting for your life to get out with a victory. So, no, no predictions for me. Not on, definitely not on this game, brother. Just want a good football game. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. All right. That was gonna be really good. I I should have came back and said my prediction is that one of the Tigers is gonna win. <laughs> It'll never